Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be doing poll foundations. So we're going to be doing our poll foundation designs in accordance with the IBC uh, 2021 version, um, chapter 1807.3. Um, it's pretty similar as well to the CBC, um, and then uh, there's you know some language in the ASC 7 uh, for the loading conditions. Um, so some kind of the design parameters that we're going to be looking at today is whether we're constrained or non-constrained at the surface. So you can see there if we have like a slab or, or maybe some pavement, um, we can consider that constrained at the surface. And if it's just in uh, pure soil, then it would be non-constrained. And that, that affects the depth required of the pole foundation pretty significantly. Um, for this problem statement, we're going to be using the presumptive load bearing values found in table 1806.2. Um, and for us, we'll be using the uh, material class 5 of 100 PSF per foot uh, below grade of lateral bearing pressure. Um, for us, uh, in chapter 1806.3.4, uh, you are allowed to increase the values from this table by a factor of 2 uh, if you are not adversely affected by a half-inch movement at the surface. So if you are okay with that one half-inch, you can double these values. If you are not okay with that half-inch, then you must use the values shown. And this also will calculate the vertical and lateral loading. So you can do the self-weight of the concrete, or maybe have another vertical load uh, on that, uh, that pole. Uh, you can calculate both of those um, per this chapter in the IBC. So let's go ahead and take a look at our problem statement for today. Let's assume that we're going to be designing a bollard for a vehicle impact. So in accordance with the IBC, as well as ASC 7, that is a 6,000 pound load um, horizontally applied between a distance of one foot six to two foot three uh, from the surface. So we are going to take the worst case moment there. So we're going to use 6,000 pounds at two foot three above grade. Um, and we're going to use that for our force on this bowler to design our foundation. We're not going to have any applied load uh, in the vertical direction, but we will use the uh, self weight of the foundation in our design. And we're going to start with a diameter of 24 inches, so two feet in diameter. And we are going to determine the depth required to resist this applied loading, so the depth of the foundation. We're going to assume it is constrained at the surface, so we have a slab or something similar uh, uh, at the surface to, to uh, control that deflection. And the one half, inch, one half inch movement is not okay. So uh, let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So let's go ahead and jump right into our concrete design and we'll click on standalone designs. And then we'll go ahead and click on our pull foundation and click confirm to load that up. So we can start going through our inputs here on the left side. Uh, we decided that we are going to have a constrained condition at the grade. So we'll go ahead and switch that to constrain. Uh, our half inch movement is not okay. So we'll leave that as no. We are gonna include our footing weight. And then we have a question here about lateral loads and whether or not they're due to seismic or wind. So what this really does is it will allow us to increase um, the lateral bearing pressure by one third as per the 2021 IBC. So it will automatically do that. So for us, though, this is an impact load, right? So it's going to be a live load. So this is not due to seismic or wind. So we will not get that one third increase. And then the distance from our ground surface to the point of load is going to be two foot three inches. So that's going to be 2.25 feet. We have a round footing with a diameter of two feet. You also have the option for a square footing if you'd like, uh, but we're going to go with a round footing. Uh, the depth of embedment, right? So this is going to be a, a bit of an iterative process. That's how this calculation works. So we're going to start here with just any number. We're going to go ahead and click in four feet. And then we want to look at our soil properties here. We're going to leave these all as um, as they are. These all represent that case five, that material type five for our soil from the presumptive load bearing table. Uh, we got 150 uh, PCF for our concrete. And then we can enter in our loads. So for the vertical loading, we don't have anything additional. We're just using the weight of the of the footing. And then for our lateral load, we have a live load of 6,000 pounds or six kips. And so we uh, have our loads entered now, and we can see that our design is not okay. We're over by quite a bit, uh, but that's okay because we know it's an iterative process. So we're going to go through here, um, and there's you know some summaries here of what our lateral loading is, um, our supplemental loading for our footing weight, that sort of thing. But what we really care about is our required minimum depth of footing for lateral. So we need to go through a few calculations first, what our footing diameter is, 
our allowable lateral soil bearing pressure. So if we did uh, have that half inch motion, we would double this. And then we want to calculate what the bearing pressure is at full depth. So we do that 0.4 KSF, which is just our 0.1 KSF per foot times four feet. And then we also uh, evaluate that against what our total maximum lateral bearing pressure is. So we get the minimum of that. And then we calculate what our depth is. So this comes from uh, the 2021 IBC equation 18.1 which is just the square root of 4.25 times V, which is our shear times height, so that gets us our moment, divided by that S3 bearing pressure, and then times the diameter of our footing. So this gives us a required depth of 8.47 feet. So remember though, this is an iterative process. So what we wanna do is basically pick a value between these two, um, and then we'll kind of narrow in. So four and eight, so we can do maybe six feet here, right, and that's 6.91. So we do 6.5, right? And that gets us pretty close. We're just a little bit short here, a 1.02. So we can just do 6.75 and that will get us uh, below our one and that gets us our uh, depth required. So something also to remember that if you were to enter in a really big number here, let me give you a warning basically saying that the current DCR ratio is not entirely accurate because uh, you it's an iterative process. So in order for this to work, our D that we're inputting, right, our D provided has to match the D required. So that's why we want to just go to what our, um, what our, you know, our D provided and D required match. So it's pretty close. Um, and that way we know that we have an accurate demand capacity ratio. And then we can just, you know, obviously this is just what we've entered here. So 6.75 feet our allowable uh, soil bearing pressure laterally, and then our allowable bearing pressure uh, vertically. And we are okay for both of those. So that is what a pole foundation design looks like in Calpook. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.